light and the spirit of truth. And bless us with all God's creation. Now and forever. Amen. Amen.
our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Christ. Jesus left that place and went to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman came from the re from that region, came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of our Savior. Please be seated. <coughs> this past week, Lonnie and Kirk and I traveled to Kauai for the Episcopal Diocese of Hawaii Clergy Conference. And Lonnie and I attended three days of workshops. The sessions focused on the deep divisions in today's society. We heard statistics on families that fall apart, parents and children who become estranged, and the societal pressures that contribute to this kind of estrangement and isolation and profound loneliness. We were given information and many theories about the causes of these problems and grim projections of what may happen if these huge societal issues remain unresolved. As we listened and discussed, I found myself thinking that we often get stuck thinking about problems, especially when those problems seem to have no solutions in sight. We spend time identifying the issues, researching causes, and quantifying ill effects. With microscopic precision, we analyze the details. We get stuck. Now, I'm not saying that it's bad to look closely at our problems, because without these efforts, we, we risk Repeating mistakes. However, sometimes our emotions, our attachments, our beliefs, our personal interests can cloud our view, cloud our judgment. This week's gospel story shows how Jesus himself got caught up in this human way of seeing and reacting to the world. A Canaanite woman seeks healing for her daughter, but her very presence triggers deeply held memories of hateful encounters between Canaanites and Israelites. This was a rift that occurred over six hundred years before the time of Jesus. Six hundred years. And still they held fast to this rift. And this is the context for today's gospel story. This centuries and centuries and generations and generations of division between the people of Canaan and the people of Israel rooted in disagreement over land, 
and religious belief. The Canaanite woman is shouting. Immediately, the disciples react. They cannot hear her words. They can only remember past encounters with Canaanites where the shouting was filled with hateful language and violence on both sides of the argument. Emotions flare, and the disciples say, send her away. She keeps shouting after us. And Jesus waves her off. I'm not here for you, he says. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Imagine this woman's courage and faith. Here she is surrounded by the enemy, those who belong to a group that has been divided from her own for centuries. Even after having been waved off and dismissed, she came and knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. We hold our breath. And then Jesus, dismisses the woman again, and this time with an insult. It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. You don't deserve what I have to give. You are a dog that would take food out of the mouths of babies. And there it is. In the heat of the moment, her plea and her faith were invisible, lost in the details of conflict and the pain of past aggression and violence. And the woman replies, Yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. After those words, two miracles occur. At that moment, Jesus opens his divine heart and expands his thinking beyond the human conflict at hand. And then the Canaanite woman, whose faith was hidden beneath religious rift, is suddenly visible to Jesus and her daughter is instantly healed. In this moment, Jesus shows us how to overcome our human obsessions with beliefs. Overturning 600 centuries of division, Jesus responds with divine love. He sees beyond the small thinking of human division to see this woman's soul. How often do we become entangled in small thinking? How tiny do we make our worldview with our focus on the details of the problems we face? Who and what are made invisible as a result? In the wake of the fires in Lahaina, we're hearing speculation about the cause. Factions are forming, pointing fingers and casting blame. And in the meantime, real people are struggling, hurting, living the reality of indescribable trauma. But at the same time, Real people are showing up to share love, support, and amazing aloha. This is what Jesus teaches us. It's up to us to tap into our hearts, to listen 
to the still, small voice of God to allow ourselves to open to love rather than close ourselves in division. This is a lesson to apply not only to our responses to the Maui fires, but to all aspects of our lives. When emotions flare, when we're angry, sad, hurt, or irritated, we can remember Jesus' response to the Canaanite woman, stepping out, stepping outside over 600 years of division, Jesus says, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. In his pastoral letter about the fires that he sent this week, Bishop Bob concludes closes his letter with this. Please be kind to one another. We will all need to show a special spirit of aloha in the days, weeks, months, and years ahead as the earth and people heal. We are called to kindness in the face of calamity, in the face of political rifts, in the face of personal troubles. Opening our hearts in faith expands our vision, allowing us to see what was once invisible. Expanded hearts can produce miracles of kindness and the healing we all so desperately need. In faith, let us fully open ourselves to God's infinite vision of our lives. Let us live into the divine expansion God offers us even if we don't fully comprehend it. For after all, the miracle of an expanded heart is the greatest and ultimate gift of Christ. Amen.
God, you are, you are the one who told the storm to be still and it obeyed. Hear us as we pray for Maui. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In times of crisis and disaster, you are the rock upon which we stand and a sure foundation to our hope. Lord, in your mercy. For the residents of Lahaina and Greater Maui who lost their homes, worship spaces, and businesses, Lord, in your mercy. For all the lost history, the lost land, and especially the tragic loss of human life, particular, particularly those who are still unaccounted and un unidentified, Lord, in your mercy. For all who mourn and grieve these losses in Maui, in Hawaii, and around the world, Lord, in your mercy. For government officials, faith leaders, community organizers, and relief workers, given tirelessly to the relief, rescue, and recovery efforts on Maui, Lord, in your mercy. For the light, for light in the darkness and peace in the chaos, Lord, in your mercy. Hear me. For resilience of the land and fortitude of the people, for all that is Maui, Lord, in your mercy. Ever present God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. We open our hearts to you, O creator, master healer, and guiding spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and fought out for and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are too sorry and we will never be For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have a mercy on us and forgive us that we may be glad in your will and walk in your grace. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
have several birthdays to celebrate this week. Today, August 20th, Jace Villanueva celebrates a birthday. On August 23rd, Nicole Garcia and Ernesto Claro celebrate their birthdays. On August 26th, Isaac Kaku celebrates a birthday. If you see any of them, give them your warmest birthday wishes and wishes for a wonderful upcoming year. <clears throat> Announcements this week. We do have a Bishop's Committee meeting today at 11 o'clock. As always, anyone who wishes may, may sit in on our meetings. Next Saturday, August 26th, from 9.30 until 1.30, we will be making kahili again in Walker Hall with our friends, the Master Feather Workers from Waimea, who are helping. We're making progress and it's coming along. Anyone is welcome to join us. It is a wonderful, wonderful um, tradition to learn. So all are welcome. That same day, August 26th, at 5 o'clock, following the beach mass at Kauai High, there will be a catered reception in honor of Mary Hanan. That reception will take place at Kauai High. So, exactly where? So it is um, by the place where the canoes meet. So oh, well, if you I just, at, yeah, canoe, canoe club. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I just spoke with Jason Hanano yesterday, and the family would like to have a burial rite for Mary the next Sunday, the following day, on Sunday, August 27th. So after our 9 o'clock service, there will be a very brief burial rite, and then afterward we will enjoy our fellowship meal together. If anyone is interested in contributing some beautiful food, I think we'll expect probably 20 or 30 of the Hanano family to come. Um, Kathy Webb will be helping to coordinate that, so if you're willing to contribute some food, please send her an email or give her a call. That's for Sunday, right? That's for Sunday, yes. So the catered reception at Kauai High on Saturday at 5, the burial rite the next day, Sunday the 27th, after our 9 o'clock service. I want to say a special thank you for these beautiful flowers, as always. Everyone who brings these lovely adornments for our sanctuary are much appreciated. They look incredible, don't they? I'm not even sure who brought them this time. They look amazing. Um, are there any other announcements this morning? The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. As we enter this time of Holy Communion together, let us say our offertory sentence. We come with offerings of our time, our money, our strength, our pleasure in one another's company. All these we bring to God in dedication and for use in the glory of the realm of God.
also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it right time right for you. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your Spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is Father. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Eternal Spirit, earth and earth, pain and earth, life and earth, source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom 
and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. May God inspire us to think with our hearts, act through Christ's love, and live in divine truth. And the blessing of God, the Creator, the Light, and the Spirit of Truth be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.